Okay, everybody. Now we're, well, I would say we're back because we just recorded a whole podcast uh, and I didn't hit record on it. <laughs> you ready for round two? Yeah. Well, welcome to the Scott Show. This is my special guest, my mom, mi madre, Carla Ferris. How you doing? Say hi to the folks. Doing great. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to kind of just shoot the breeze here. So I kind of wanted to talk about, start it off, not talking about music, but talking about something kind of fun is uh, family pranks and joking oh, with each yeah. other and scaring each other is kind of a big thing with us. I'd say it's more of a, it's a tradition. And uh, do you remember the first time that I pranked you as a kid? I made you breakfast. Yeah, I remember that. what I do? Do you remember? Well, I made you some toast. Something hot on the toast, yep. hot pepper or something you put on my toast. It was some black pepper disguised as cinnamon. Yeah. And she picked up on it and did not eat it. But I tried. Yeah. I tried. And uh, some other traditions that we have, I mean, uh, we would do scare each other. Me, Samuel, oh, yeah, Kayla, it gets outside you. the window in the dark. and <laughs> Scare, Scared her many times outside this window right here. <laughs> or the stuffed uh, coyote put on my porch on the bench when I got off work. I totally forgot that guy. I don't even remember. I think I got my dad got it from somewhere, and then he was done messing with people with it, so he gave it to me, and I took it over to mom's. And yeah, oh man, that was too funny. And then uh, another one of our big traditions is, uh, as you guys probably know, since you're watching us, probably know me or whatever. Uh, we love to watch wrestling, professional wrestling, mm-hmm. and get together. We keep track of who who wins each match and. We pick who wins each match, and at the end of the show, see who wins. Last show we watched, you guys came down to my house, was WWE Extreme Rules, I believe. Mm-hmm. So what got you into wrestling, Mom? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you and Kayla started watching. I watched it when I was little with my Uncle Russell. Right. I remember Russell and then you peeling guys... potatoes yeah. and eating them. <laughs> Raw. Raw, yep. Yeah. It was a salt shaker. And then you and Kayla started watching, and then I started watching it. <laughs> it's been fun. We just kind of, I mean, uh, and then now we got another wrestling show about to start up, AEW. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to be on Wednesday nights. Then, um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, here in uh, Whitehall, you know, it's kind of uh, a rural town, 3,000 people. And so if you kind of live on the outskirts of town, uh, which like where I used to live, I used to live right down the street from my mom. And with all the fields and stuff, occasionally you get a, a mouse or two run a mouse in the house. Yeah. And uh, my mom is terrified of mice. Actually, when you were pregnant with Kayla, I remember you being in the bathroom, and I rolled up a little sock and left a little tail of it and threw it in there. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one too, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you recently caught a mouse. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> I caught it. Well, he was dead on the trap. Did you expose, dispose him, or did somebody yeah, else? Yeah, I finally got the nerve and uh, picked the whole trap. And You did it? Yeah, finally. Oh, I thought you told me Kayla did it. <laughs> no, I did. I finally picked the trap up with the mouse in it and just tossed it in a grocery sack. And he didn't get you? No, he didn't get me. <laughs> it didn't. Scary looking thing. <laughs> She's just terrified of mice. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And then, uh, yeah, we came back for it. That was whenever we, we set the traps where we left for Indianapolis last mm-hmm. weekend to go see Samuel. So we'll hop on the road here of talking about some music stuff real quick. What are some of your memories of me when I first started playing music? Do you remember any time frame of me getting interested into it and all that uh, good stuff? Probably news like five or six. Mm-hmm. I bought you a little guitar. Right. What kind of, I don't know. I'll show you the picture of it. It, it, it. Well, on the video, it'll pop up at this time, so you guys can see that right now. Yeah, I uh, bought him a guitar, and he liked playing it and trying to sing with it. And I'm still trying to sing, <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> Would you, at any point, were you ever like, man, will, will you just be quiet and stop singing? Because I was probably singing off key a whole lot, I'm sure. No. I think me and my mom always knew you was going to be a singer and make it big one day. I'm still... Yeah, we're, 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 we are working on it. Yeah. And uh, speaking of making it big, 
my uh, first big show when I was a kid was uh, playing every Thursday night at the local nursing home here in town where my grandma Helen was at, uh, your mom. And uh, you used to help, do you remember helping me load in all the equipment to your car and then driving me out and then bringing me back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I helped haul in the amplifiers and setting you up and all that. Mm -hmm. I still got people today, a couple of girls still talk about uh, <laughs> When your grandma, my mom was there, that how excited she was that Scotty was going to play out there. Heck yeah, I remember the first time I saw myself on the activity like calendar they have there and th during the month that I was coming to sing. I was like, this is the coolest thing. Because I used to go out there on Saturdays and play bingo with my grandma and hope that she'd win. So I'd get a little hostess cupcake or whatever it was that the prize was. And uh, she always gave it to me. I remember her writing... Um, Back in this time, the Ellen DeGeneres show, the equivalent to back then, was the Ricky Lake show. And I remember Grandma writing a letter trying to get to Ricky Lake, trying to get me onto her show to sing <laughs> on TV. Yeah, I remember that. And then um, after that was kind of about the time whenever uh, I was doing the shows at the housing outside and then playing over uh, – just right outside our wall there at the end, putting on concerts. You remember that? Yeah. You guys go out like the back door and set up like he's a big old, have a big old concert. And Heck yeah. Go around town selling tickets, I think for a dollar, 50 cents. <laughs> Got to hustle and make some money in this world. And uh, then I remember another time uh, during that, when I was a kid, going and playing at the bingo hall at the local housing area where they had like this extra room they used probably for business meetings and community events. And this guy from around my hometown, Derek Clyden, grew up together. He played keyboard, which we played along like with the CD, just looking like we knew what we were doing. And uh, his grandma, which I, you said her name was Delilah. Delilah. Right. right yes. Lawson. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen her. And, uh, she uh, got us hooked up with a gig to play at her uh, bingo. Uh, that, they had a little bingo thing that they would put on, and they'd have a little snack break in the middle, and that was whenever we got to do our show for like 20 minutes or something. I was nervous as all get out. And then uh, kind of fast forward on to that is whenever – I remember you, when you got me my first acoustic guitar. It was probably in fourth or fifth grade, fifth grade maybe. And uh, you had it hidden under your bed, which I found and knew I was getting. So always got to try to find the hiding spots for yeah, the gifts when you're kids. So if you're a kid watching this, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you need to get on the bus and start looking for your Christmas gifts. And then um, that was kind of about the time I jumped through, you know, did the Tone C boy band thing in eighth grade. And uh, then after that was like kind of where Midwest Avenue, the first incarnation with me and my dad and Uncle Jeff and Cousin Josh uh, got started. Then uh, we did the shows out at the Great River Road Opry. Mm -hmm. The Great River Road Opry. I'm talking real fast here, folks, <laughs> and not enunciating, as I'm known to do. And you remember going to those shows out there? Yes, I remember going. Like I said, I can remember, I think Nikki Bug was probably eight. I don't know, mm -hmm. you was probably... 11 or 12, she'd sing a song, you'd sing a song. Yeah, Nikki's yeah. super talented. It's kind of weird to, uh, thinking back to that point to think, you know, fast forward five years after that point that she'd be singing in a band that we're both in. Then um, she's super talented. Everett Bug is her dad, super talented guitar player. Uh, hooked us up with those shows. He ran the Great River Road Opry, which uh, they still have an Opry. It's going on now. I haven't been to it, but I, I need to make it up to one of them, uh, the Bug Family Opry in Hillview. Then uh, after that was kind of uh, whenever I was you know, in high school and working on uh, writing songs and just honing my craft. And then fast forward to that, it was about 2007. I started my first solo career. And... Uh, I wound up getting two black cats, kittens, and carried them around with me on the different shows and stuff. And then about time it got winter time, uh, I realized I probably shouldn't be take, take them around with me. So let mom watch them for a couple of days. It turned into more than a couple months. Now you asked me <laughs> if I could watch them. I think you hauled them around the car and <laughs> car and a cardboard box or a pet taxi. Yep. 
<laughs> snowing out and i said well i guess i'll take them in for you why wilmer and barkley that yeah. was their names and uh yeah and they're not with us anymore one one of them was probably still running around somewhere he ran yeah, away. i don't even like cats but <laughs> one of them like me and sat by me and see animals aren't so bad yeah <laughs> and then after that was uh the uso tour oh yeah so what'd you think about me when i got that gig and was about to head over there to honduras and bogota colombia well i thought well here's his opportunity he's going on a <laughs> uso tour and he's going to be famous <laughs> uh well i was kind of scared and i didn't want you to go and mm -hmm. all the shots you had to get and you know it's a long ways over there speaking of shots so if you don't if you don't ever have to get a rabies shot don't do it because it it was on the uh, CDC's recommendations of shots to get before you travel to these places. <clears throat> Since we're going to be in the middle of the jungle, the uh, rabies shot is required, and it's a tough one to get. It hurts. It hurt me anyways. Oh, and speaking of that, yeah, you talked about my mom trying to get you on the Ricky Lake show. Mm -hmm. When you went on the USO tour, I tried to get on my computer, but I don't know that much about <laughs> computers, and I tried to get your sister to help me. And I was trying to put a thing into Ellen DeGeneres that my son was going on a USO tour, but <laughs> I don't think we ever finished it to get it sent. Well, that's all right. Uh, it's you get an E for effort. I tell you what, that is too funny. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres. That would have been fun to do. Yeah, I tried, and Kayla never did help me. I finish probably could have made some time. I don't know if I ever we got it sent or not. I don't think we did. <laughs> I was trying to. <laughs> That, that was kind of about the time when I took a little break from uh, playing music. And then uh, Midwest Avenue started back up. That was whenever Nikki joined in along with Megan Hedegar and Beaver Hopper and a couple other guys, Steve Vincent, my dad. Um, and we was playing around. I'm, one thing about Nikki I remember is she was so like seasoned already as a performer at such a young age that our first show we played was a packed out house here in our hometown and I was nervous as all get out, but Nikki had nerves of steel and was just ready to take on the show and handle business like it was nobody's business. And then, uh, I'm just checking something here to make sure we're still good. Yes, we are. Cause I, I'm getting nervous now because we got about 15, 20 minutes into this thing. And then, uh, I looked down, and I'm like, oh, I didn't hit record. So mm -hmm. we were just oh, talking. Oh, I know. What about uh, you went to the Texaco Showdown? Oh, yeah. Totally forgot about that. Yeah. And won that and then got to the state level and lost that. Yeah. You were there for that in the state fair? Yeah, at state fair, but there was, what, like 10 bands? That made yeah, there was, there was 10 bands yeah. in the state of Illinois that made it. And we got second, or I think we got third with the voting. So third best band there. Yeah. But that was, that, that was a crushing loss because, like, I felt like we – I mean, you always yeah. feel like you come out and knock it out, and it's always a bummer to lose whenever yeah. you like winning so much. But mm -hmm. learned a lot from that. I uh, learned to uh, not get so excited before I do a big show to where I'm overperforming to where it, it, it isn't natural, and I think that was one of the things that held me back. But I don't think it was the reason we lost. The people that won it, they were super talented. Mm -hmm. So – um and after that i'm gonna say that was about the time uh midwest avenue we released our first uh ep uh red wine ep and uh, recorded that here in whitehall i did all the producing on it that was my first time producing a full band record and it was not perfect but i learned a lot from producing it do you have a favorite song off that let me think because i get the albums confused <laughs> Uh, you Don't Belong to Me, is that one on there? I Don't Belong to You, yes. Okay, I like that one. Dreaming of Girls, not on there. Nope, that's, nope, that's all on the next one. one. Yeah. I have Red Wine, I like yeah. it. Yeah, heck yeah. That was, that was probably my favorite song yeah. on the record. And what was funny about it is it was actually written as a fast song, not a slow song, and then it became a slow song through the recording process. Because we actually re we recorded it, I don't know, slower and then we slowed it down even some more because it sounded so good and uh then after that we did i mean heck midwest avenue we played hundreds of shows a year in that three four year stretch 
and then we uh, called her quits, and that's when I became a solo artist and uh, started using a stage name, which was your maiden name, Wyatt, and Grandma Helen's last name that kind of helped get me into music with turning me on to Elvis, along with my dad, you know, uh, playing drums all those years in bands. And uh, so what do you think whenever I uh, did the name change? Did it surprise you at all? It was just a stage name. It wasn't a legal name change or anything. No. Huh? I had a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, <laughs> is Scott White your son or Scott Ferris? Or he's got two names. <laughs> is it two different people? <laughs> it might be two different people. We don't know. We're still investigating this new group uh, that came out with my old band name, Midwest Avenue, that released a song that I wrote called Night Roads. And they also released it. So I'm going to talk to them maybe on this podcast about copyright infringement. <laughs> now, I, I had a lot of people ask me, too. They were like, did you legally change the name or what? And I'm like, no, it's because my last name was too dang hard to pronounce. You know, I mean, you have to spell it out for folks, don't you, still? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ferris, they think it starts with an F, which, I mean, it has the yeah, F sound. Ferris will, or, yeah, they always think it starts with an F. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after that was uh, my the solo project, and then released the Night Roads EP. They recorded down in Nashville uh, with Night Roads, Me and This Bottle, Dreaming the Girl, This Time, and Manny the Drinking Man. Now to those, what was your favorite song off that record? I like Me and This Bottle and Dreaming the Girl. Yeah, and speaking of Dreaming the Girl, Mom hollered out about a year ago at one of my shows to play Dreaming the Girl. And I hadn't played it in probably since I wrote it and recorded it. And it was just never never a song that I played live. And I just hadn't played it in so many years that I barely could even remember the words. But I got through it. Got through it. And so then kind of fast forward. I, do you remember anything? Anything you want to throw in? Uh, I don't know. I'm very proud of my son. <laughs> and he's going to make a big one day. And I'm just waiting until I'm setting for the Grammy Awards. There we go. I, 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 <laughs> Grammy I, I, Awards. I'll be sitting there watching Scotty up on stage. I think those are some reasonable goals that are very achievable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. It's yeah. uh, Speaking of, you know, setting goals, uh, on our way back from Indianapolis last weekend, we stopped in at the recording studio to listen to the final mixes of my five new songs. What was that experience like for you? That was your first time ever in a recording studio. I don't know. I was excited. Uh, it was interesting to... Here's Scott in the recording studio. and Might have been the first time my mom has ever called me Scott. Yeah, Scott. I meant Scotty. <laughs> well, I call him Scotty, but then people's like, well, he's not a little kid. But Well, I said Scott. I meant Scotty. Well, people say, call me. My family all calls me Scotty because yeah. my dad's name is Scott. So yeah. that's how you tell the two apart. <laughs> yeah. So you enjoyed your time there at the studio and watching Cameron, the producer, do all his yeah. stuff? It was interesting. I'll see how he does all that recording and <laughs> how you record the songs. And yeah. yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it's, uh, I, Cameron's fun to work with and uh, always has a lot of great ideas to bring the most out of each song. And uh, so I'm excited to get the new record out, which people have asked me, you know, with the new Midwest Avenue stuff, are you still doing your solo project? And yes, I am. I got a new record that's going to be coming out, doing them both full time. So uh, we'll see what happens. It'll be two completely different bands, two completely different sounds, shows, and feels. So, and that's uh, your one new song. Which new song? The Cowboys. Go Cowboys Say Cowboys Goodbye. Yeah, that was Midwest goodbye. Avenue. Yeah, yeah, I like that song. Yeah, Cowboys Say Goodbye. That was actually uh, uh, we were Midwest Avenue before we went on a hiatus or basically broke up the last time back in like 2013. That was going to be the next song that we released. The Night Roads was going to be. But we broke up before we could record them. And I kept Cowboys Say Goodbye in the past and brought Night Roads over to my solo project. And then that's how that got on there. And, um, yeah, other than that, I really uh, kind of up to current date. You made some ham and beans. I already ate some. Ham, beans, cornbread, fried potatoes. <laughs> What's my favorite food, do you think, Mom? Oh, Top boy. two. Top two would be tuna patties and meatloaf. Got that right. It makes the best meatloaf and the best tuna patties around. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we're going to close things up here and maybe eat some food and do some visiting. So, Mom, thank you for being on. Were, were you nervous? Yes, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't too bad. 
and uh, we'll have her back on here folks so we appreciate you guys uh checking out the show here and uh we'll be back soon with another one thank you for being on the show you're welcome see ya (laughs) 